So I want to talk about four senseless things that people do. Some of these things are things that I do. That's why I'm talking about it. Maybe other people aren't as stupid as me. But if you are the type of person that's conscious about maybe things that you've said or done. Today I'm going to try and help you by talking about four senseless things that people say and do. So welcome to my channel where we talk about uh, bikes and Bible verses. As usual, we'll have a Bible verse at the end. Please stick around for that. The first senseless thing that a lot of people say is is to do with goal setting. You know, my goal is to get 75% in the exam. My goal is to make $10,000 of sales this month. My goal is for our team to win the next three matches. The first time I heard someone talking about a goal like this I thought it was a bit weird like something was a bit off about it but I've been hearing this so much that I just sort of went with it because everyone was saying it until one day 25 years later I realized that it's not just me who thought that this was weird as it turns out this type of goal setting is a bit off because there are a lot of factors that are unknown, uncontrollable and unpredictable for many of these goals that people set out to achieve. I'm not saying that goal setting is always out of your control. Uh, there are some situations where the goal is controllable and predictable. For example, if I usually make 8 widgets per day, uh, if I work a little bit faster and a little bit longer, I can set the goal of making 10. It's predictable, it's controllable. Even in sales, every 10 clients you approach, you get five sales, and that's like being a predictable and consistent thing. Then you can set the goal that, you know, if you approach 20 clients, you'll get double the sales. But most of the time, people are setting goals for things that they don't have predictability or control over. Test marks, um, sporting match results, that's why sports gambling exists, it's because it's so unpredictable. So instead of setting goals based on a result, why don't you set the goal based on a behavior or a process? You know, if you're failing at school, set the goal to study three hours a day. If your team is losing, aim to train three times a week. YouTube is going bad, seek an alternative approach. Setting a process makes a lot more sense and gives you a lot more motivation since you know your work is all cut out for you you know exactly what you need to do rather than just trying to set some random result the second senseless thing that a lot of people do is they follow the sheep on misguided advice and they suppress their own true thoughts and feelings there was this like really good video made by film booth you know he's very knowledgeable and he's got great advice he made this you know he made this one video about to get the youtube algorithm to favor you more while he was making this video he had this b plot going on in the background it was about how he was going to his friend's wedding and washing his car even though the main video was about like retention advice what annoyed me was that everyone including himself was glorifying and attri attributing the success of the video because of this storyline, this B-plot. And, you know, the crowd was following this suggestion mindlessly. But when I stopped and listened to my own feelings, I personally found that the car wash storyline was a bit distracting and annoying. If I wanted to click off the video, it was because of this B-plot of the car wash um, and him going to his friend's wedding. It was just background noise that I had to troll through to get through what I really wanted which was the actual points he was making about how to get better results with the YouTube algorithm. I think the video was successful because I was interested in hearing his points and the B plot that he had there was actually a hurdle for me. Everyone said that the B plot made the video successful and everyone believed it. Probably because like you know it was a novel idea which it was. But I don't think it, what everyone was saying was actually true. Like, as a side note, I'm not saying that B-plots are bad. I'm just saying this particular video uh, didn't execute it very well. So at this point, we can avoid becoming senseless by stopping and asking the question, is what everyone's saying resonating with me? Rather than just taking the information in a way that just leaves your feelings dry. The third senseless behavior that a lot of people do 
is thoughtless prompts and unauthoritative suggestions. A lot of people have talked about this concept of your mind's filter. You know, whether it's like self-censorship or disregarding social rules or etiquette or just, you know, trying to be funny when you're not. Where the trap is, is not so much inability to control your own filter, but it's when these thoughtless prompts come from someone else externally. Your filter works well for your own thoughts, but it can be caught off guard from someone else's thoughtless prompts. To overcome this, don't assume that a prompt is not thoughtless just because it came from someone else. Always run it by your own filter first because it'll be you who would look like the fool when you execute this prompt. The other person who gave you this prompt is not the one that's going to bear the shame. Another thing which is similar in nature to these thoughtless prompts but has more serious consequences is following through on unauthoritative suggestions. It usually comes from someone who's more authoritative than you but doesn't actually have the authority to allow the decision that they're asking for. This could be a manager from a different department from which you work in giving you permission to go home early but your direct manager you know, it doesn't have any idea about it. Or like a junior executive prompting you to make a purchase for the company, but you suddenly find yourself in an awkward conversation with the senior manager when it comes to getting reimbursement for the item. To overcome this, treat it in a similar way as the previous point. Run it through your own filter, or instead, think one step ahead. What happens after I buy the item? What would the conversation sound like with a person who's really in authority when I face them tomorrow. The fourth senseless thing that a lot of people do is when you lack discretion when giving advice. Sometimes we give advice and it turns out to be wrong. But when you find this like a common occurrence, maybe you're starting to feel embarrassed about it. Or maybe you've impacted someone greatly by this bad advice. And you can look at working on the common reasons why this happened. The first one is the one size fits all mentality. One size fits all means that it works for you but won't necessarily work for someone else's unique situation. The reason though why people fall for this is not so much because they're actually convinced that the other person has the same problem but it's more so because they're eager, eager to share their own experiences in their own life like show and tell in kindergarten. So it's more to do with selfish and egotistical reasons that this wrong advice is provided, all under the guise of helping someone else with a problem. I was on a forum asking about a smoky engine in my motorcycle, and early in the forum I was heading towards a total engine rebuild. Later on I thought about it more and sat back and put two and two together and realized that the actual problem was due to bad fuel. I emptied the tank, put new fuel in, and problem solved. Other common reasons why people give bad advice is overconfidence, you know, the Dunning and Kruger effect, um, and emotions is another big one. Lack of accountability is a big one for online, you know, forums and YouTube comments, but also specifically on forums is the pressure to conform. A group of bikers who are known to each other, giving each other high fives in the chat groups, feel like they need to give advice because of the pressure to conform. So to sum it up, rather than trying to cover the symptoms, perhaps look at the root cause for bad advice, which is ego and insecurity, and work on these to stop it from happening. I'm not saying don't share your experiences, but when you do, exercise discretion. Give key details um, that helps the person rule out their problem. You know, you might say, yeah, my engine was smoky once, I had a blown head gasket. I had to fill up water every 20 kilometers. And then I'll be like, oh, wait, I rode for 50 kilometers and my radiator is still full. But if you find yourself being frustrated by constantly giving wrong advice, maybe size up the discretion or care um, when you're providing advice. So a related Bible verse on this top topic is from Proverbs 10:14. It says, the wise store up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool invites ruin. Other translations say that the wise holds their tongue and the fool blurts out everything. One could say you can learn a lot about avoiding these senseless behaviors by learning from the Bible. 
The problem is, is that there are much more powerful forces that work to make you say these senseless things. You know on the surface level that it's wrong, but when it comes to the time, it's ego and insecurity that make you do it in the heat of the moment. This is another aspect that when you are living a life following Jesus, it heals you from. So it's things like ego and insecurity that will help you to stop saying or doing things that are senseless. So anyway, that's all I wanted to share today. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button, make a comment. Uh, if you like my content in general, please hit the subscribe button. I've also got two playlists, one motorcycle related, the other uh, with topics like this. Uh, and if you are riding a motorcycle, take it easy and ride safe.